Hey, what's up guys, Codeforge here. Today we will learn how to send messages to the Artemis MQ and how to receive the messages from the Artemis MQ. Artemis is one of the JMS implementations and the JMS is the Java message service used for the asynchronous communication between components. If you want to check out how to install Artemis MQ on your host machine, I have created a video about it. In the first place, let's create a Spring Boot project. So the group will become that CodeForge YouTube and the artifact, let's say Artemis Demo. We will need two extra dependencies to achieve our goal. And the first one will be Spring Boot Web for uh, triggering our messages. And the second one will be Artemis for the communication. So we want to type Artemis and we select this package over here. Okay, so I will download the project, open it in my IDE and we can start coding. So we are in the IDE. If you don't know what happened, you can check out one of my two videos about importing Spring Boot projects into Eclipse and IntelliJ. In the first place, we want to create a package for our services. So we right click on the main package, we select package and it's called service. Okay, we'll have two classes one will be responsible for sending messages to the jms broker and the second one will be responsible for receiving the messages we'll start with the sending so we right click on our package we select new and we want to create a java class and let's say it will be dispatcher service so it will be responsible for sending messages to the jms in the first place, we want to make this class a Spring Managed Bin, so we want to annotate it with the service annotation, like this. To send messages, we will need JMS template class, so we will use dependency injection to get it. So we say auto wired, and we want to inject JMS template, and we want to give it a name JMS template. We also need the destination queue on which we will send the message. So we will create a variable which will store this destination. So it will be the string type and it will be called JMS queue. We want to make this JMS queue destination configurable. So we will use value annotation. So we say value and we want to get the value from the application properties and the property name will be JMS Q. Like this. So now let's create a method which will be responsible for sending the message. So it will be public. It will be void and we want to name it send message. Our method will have one parameter, which will be the string type, and we will call it message. And this will be the message which we will pass to send to the JMS. Now we actually want to send the message. So we'll use the JMS template, which has been injected to our class. And now we want to call the convert and send method. And we want to check the second overload and the first argument will be the destination so it will be the jms queue and the second one will be the message as i have said first argument is our jms queue destination which we will get from the application properties and the second argument is the message which we will pass to our send message method okay and this is all it is pretty simple and now we will create the receiver service. So let's create a new class. We right click on the service package, new Java class, and we'll name it receiver service. Like before, we want to make it a spring managed bin. So we use the service annotation. We want to log received message to the console. So we will create a logger object so we'll pick this one from the slf4j we'll name it log and using the logger factory we want to get a new logger instance so we say get logger and we want to say we want it for the receiver service class like this 
Next step is to define the method which will be responsible for receiving message and displaying it to the console. So we say public void and we want to name our method receive message. Our method will get the string type message. So we'll define it as the parameter. And now we want to simply log it to the console. So we will use our logger object and we want it to be logged on the info level. And let's say we want to say received message and we want to concatenate our message. So it will be message. Last thing we have to do is to annotate our method with the JMS listener annotation. In this JMS listener, we have to define the destination parameter and we want to set it to the JMS queue property from the application properties, which we'll define later. So it must be the same as the JMS queue uh, on which we are sending the message. So Let's copy this thing from here and let's put it over here. Our receiver is also done. So now let's create a new package for our controller, which will trigger the message. So we say controller. Inside we want to create a new class and let's say it will be the message controller. It will be a REST controller, so we will use REST controller annotation. And we also want to inject our dispatcher service as the dependency, so we use auto wire annotation and we say dispatcher service with the same name. Now we want to create our REST endpoint, so we say public and it will return response entity and it will be the generic type with the string and we want to name it send. We want to pass the message in our request body so we will use the request body annotation in here which will be the type of string. You can also pass the object, some complex object but we'll stick to the simple string message. In the body, we want to use our dispatcher service send message method and we want to simply pass our message from the request body. At the end, we want to return the response entity and we want to return the string with the following message. So message sent and the message which we have sent and we want it to be the HTTP status OK. Oh, and the new at the beginning, my bad. We are almost done with the coding. Uh, the one thing that left is to define the properties in the application properties file. We want to define several things over here and we'll use the default properties from the Spring Boot. So first thing is the spring.artemis mode and we want to set it to the native and the second option is to use the embedded but we are not using embedded broker we are using the external one after this we want to define the host on which the artemis will work and in our case it is the same machine so we say spring artemis host and we want to set it to the local host we also want to define the port on which Artemis will be available. So we say spring.artemis.port and it will be the default port on which Artemis is working. So it is 61616. Now we want to define the user which we will use to connect. So it will be spring.artemis.user and let's say it will be admin. If we have user, we also want the password. So we say spring.artemis.password and we want to set it to the test, let's say. And the last thing we need is this JMSQ 
property which we have defined in our dispatcher service and also in our receiver service this is our custom property so we say jms q and we want to set it to the value of q dot test so the dispatcher service will send the message to this queue and the receiver service is listening to this queue so it will receive this message and display it to the console configuration and development of our application is done so now we can create a broker okay you can see that we are right now in the apache artemis bin directory and if we list the content we can see that inside we have the artemis uh, executable file it is the green one uh, with the asterisk we want to use this executable file so we type uh, dot slash we say artemis and now we want to use the create command and let's call our new broker broker test and we have to specify user and it was admin i believe yes so it will be set to admin and we also need password so it was test we hit enter it will ask us if you want to allow anonymous access we say no and we hit enter and after a few seconds it should be created okay it's up and running so let's clear the console and let's list the content of directory broker test directory appeared so let's navigate there we want to go to the broker test inside we have the bin directory so we go there and we can list the content we can see that we have here another executable file artemis service exe with the asterisk and we can use this to install our broker as the windows service and then start it let's do it so we use the dot slash artemis service exe and we want to say install and we have the access denied because i forgot to open the bash as the administrator so let's do it okay let's give it one more try it should be good right now so we say artemis service exe install and it should be good now we want to start it so we say artemis service exe start now let's try to access web console so we will be sure that it is up and running we can see that our artemis instance is working let's go to the management console and over here we want to use the admin user with the test password and login and now we are sure that it is working by the way it is available on the local host port 8161 and it is the default one we can explore it a little bit and we can see that we don't have any queues over here we have some default things only so let's try to run our new application and the queue which we have defined in the application properties file should be created so we are here in our artemis demo we want to clean it in the first place it's done now we want to install it it will take a while i believe so in the meantime let's go here and it should be all good one more test and yes we have the build success and now we can run it so we want to select the spring boot run and after a few seconds it should be good yes it started on the port 8080 so let's check out if our queue has been created we are back in the console we can refresh the page and we can see that right now we have the queue test over here which we have defined in our uh, properties files we have to go back to the code guys because i have forgot to define the endpoint so we have the method but i have didn't define the mapping for this endpoint so we have to use the post mapping annotation over here and we will set the value to slash send so this is the endpoint which we will use to trigger the message so we have to rebuild the application right now
Application is up and running again. I have executed Maven clean, then install, and I have used Spring Boot Run to restart it. I have also opened Postman to test our endpoint, and as you can see, we will execute the post request on the localhost port 8080. This is the port where our Artemis demo application is listening, and we will trigger the send endpoint. Before sending the message, we have to define it, so we go to the body. As you can see over here, I have selected row, and over here, let's say, we want to send the message hello Artemis and remember about quotation marks so now we can click the send button and message should appear in our console and we can see it over here at the very bottom so basically we have triggered the send endpoint and the send endpoint triggered the um, dispatcher service to send the message and this message appeared on the JMS and our receiver service has uh, received it and displayed the console. We can also send message from our web console. So you can see that I have selected this directory with the queue test or we can also click over here the name of our queue. Here we have the send button. Before doing anything, we have to define credentials in the first place. So we can click on the preferences over here, or we can go here and click preferences. And we have to provide the password. So it was the test, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Now we can define the message. So we say hello from Artemis MQ. We click the send button. And we can see that the message has been sent. And if we see in the console of our application over here, we have received message hello from Artemis MQ. So everything works. I hope you guys enjoyed this short demo. If you like my content, guys, remember about subscribing to the channel. And you can also turn on notifications to stay updated. And also about liking the videos. See you next time.